Joining us now in Studio B is BYU wide receiver Aleva Hifo and part-time quarterback now <laughs> after the win at Wisconsin. Aleva, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's a pleasure having me. Uh, you bet, man. I, why would we not have you after you delivered that dime to Moroni at Laulaputita? Now, you told me something after the game, and I want everybody to know this. You, you gave a special name to that play on Monday. So tell us about when it got implemented and what the name of the play was. Uh, the name of the play was called Bucky. I think that that's when they're mascots. <laughs> the, the play is just called Bucky Wright, and we just knew that the formation and everything to be in. And we implemented that play last Monday. And it's kind of funny how it came about because the first period in practice, Fessy had all the receivers kind of have like an audition to see who can throw the best. And I guess I, I, guess I won that. <laughs> so, so, so did you know that you won? The competition, like, okay, if we do this, Aleva, you're the guy? We each had about, like, two throws, and then Fessy told me after. He said, okay, Aleva, you're going to be the guy. And then we started practicing it okay. all week. So I thought it was funny. I, I didn't think we were going to run it that early in the game. So, But you knew you were going to run it at some point? Yeah, we knew it was going to come up at some point. Okay. Early on the in that first drive, and, and BYU you did this against Arizona, but there were a bunch of jet sweeps to you. Was that to set that play up? Uh, yeah, because we knew that we needed to do some misdirections, some pre-snaps pre-snap adjustments in order to get their defense to spread out a little bit because Wisconsin, they're an assignment on defense, so we needed to change it up a little bit and get them off their toes. So I think the jet sweeps opened up a lot of things for us, and it worked out pretty well. So when that play call comes in, is your hand getting a little sweaty, getting a little nervous? You're like, oh, or were you the opposite? You're like, okay, let's do this. I think we had like a little a little media timeout before before we got that play called, and one of the things Grimes says, that he just he says we're going with it. I remember he was on the mic, and then uh, – he gets the call in, and I, I overhear it. He's, they say, Bucky Wright. And I'm looking at the defense, and I'm like, dang. I'm, I'm not, I, I wasn't sure how it was going to work out. So, <laughs> But it worked out perfectly. I saw Marone run down the field, and I couldn't believe how open he was. Yeah, and, uh, and you told me you saw the safety and uh, the outside coverage just crashing really hard. So you said, in that moment, I, I knew I had to get rid of it really quickly. Yeah, it was going gonna, was gonna to be a pitch and catch. Though. I, I feel like a baseball player getting the ball out, but... <laughs> But it was it was good because the corner was pressed, the defense the defensive end he recognized it right away, and the safety was low, and we're in the boundary, which makes it even a lot closer. So and we had a jet sweep go away from me, so I was by myself for a little bit, but Dallin Holker came over and handled the job. True freshman, he did a good job of holding holding that edge. And let's talk about that for a second because before the game, all of a sudden Braden Elbakri's not playing, right? Yeah. And uh, Kujay Tapusoa and Griffiths they were hurt in fall camp. So he's playing fullback in this game as well yeah. um, and almost made that catch down the goal line. What, what do you have to say about Dallin Holker's performance in multiple positions? Oh, he's been proven since first day of fall camp. We knew that he can be the playmaker that he's been so far. He hasn't had many opportunities to be, be, to be catching the ball, but you can tell that he's going to be a very special player for us in the future. And he's, he's holding up his end of the deal, and he's proven to be the one. He got like a, like a serious burn on his arm after that catch, by the way. Did you oh, see did it? He? Yeah, it, no, it looked see that. gnarly. Turf burn yeah. is the worst. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Aleva Hifo, BYU wide receiver, is with us Last on BYU Sports Nation, yes, and part-time we're gonna, quarterback. We're, gonna, we're not going to live that down. You threw a pass before Zach Wilson did, by the way. <laughs> Give him a hard time about that. Oh, I'll be on him about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Aleva, let's talk about the reality of what BYU pulled off at Wisconsin. Now that you've had the weekend to think about it, um, what, what are your emotions today? Looking back on that, be like, wow, we... We just beat the number six team in the country, and BYU's ranked number twenty-five. Like, how how are you processing all of that? I don't know. Like, a lot has happened over the weekend. Uh, to be honest, I'm still not over it. I think a lot of us aren't either. I remember sitting in, in the airport lock in the airport uh, parking lot after with Sione because he took me home after, and he was like, "Man, when they missed that field goal, I couldn't believe it. I, I still can't." And you know, that's just the same thing that all the players kind of. It's just a big win overall. This, I think. I don't think. I know we got to move on to the next game, but. This is definitely going to be something to remember. And our coaches talked about about that before, that these are the games you remember. These are the type of games that you're going to remember forever. And the guys that you play with and all the games and all the plays, you'll, you'll remember vividly, like, plays that came from that game. And I think that's that's what's going to happen in the future. Yeah, this is one of the all-timers. Like, whenever you're saying that, well, you're going to be, like, 70, and someone's going to be like, oh, yeah, you were on the team that beat Wisconsin. I'm serious. Like, this was a very significant thing. Um, when did the belief set in that, in in reality, we can do this. Like, w when did that set in, and how did that set in? Well, obviously, uh, we're we're labeled as an underdog, and we the the win was labeled as an upset. You know, they're number six team, and we're com we're coming off a loss. We're one on one, and they're two and zero. Oh. They have they have really good guys on their side of the ball, but throughout the whole week, our coaches preached that if we execute and 
And if we just do our job, we can hang with anybody. And that's something that we all we all believed that if we played our football, that's something that we can do is is we can beat anybody. So throughout the game, we we handled and executed every play, no turnovers. That was big for us. So now I think the fact that and you brought it up, BYU was coming off a loss to Cal. Yeah. Gave you that added motivation, chip on the shoulder. Maybe makes Wisconsin think a little bit like, uh, I don't know if BYU is as good as people said they were after Arizona, and we beat them 40-6 to six last year. It kind of seemed like Wisconsin was in the perfect trap scenario. So you tell me, what, what role did what happened against Cal play in how you prepared for the Wisconsin game and what that gave to you mentally? Well, one thing the players always say is we're, we're going to be all right. And uh, one thing that I remember Kalani saying throughout the meetings every morning or – Every afternoon before we started all our, our practice and stuff was that Wisconsin doesn't know what's coming. And that's a perfect explanation of what happened in the game. They don't know what's coming. That's they we came off a loss, then they're expecting us to be the team that we were last year. And I think that we proved that a lot of people wrong and we proved ourselves right. So that's a big thing. So you guys just need to be a double digit dog on the road playing a Heisman Trophy candidate. Is that just like <laughs> the scenario you need to win right now? Yeah, maybe, maybe that needs to be it, but overall we just need to keep playing like that, just just playing and be ourselves and have fun. They keep stressing just to have fun. And it, you guys were having fun. When the third quarter ended, you know it's coming. You guys have been playing it all week, right, in practice? Yeah. House of pain, jump around. It was at that moment I thought, oh, my goodness, this is, this is going down. Um, describe what it was like on the sideline in that moment when that stadium's jumping around, but they're a little nervous and you guys aren't. Yeah, well, that song definitely got very annoying throughout the week. We, <laughs> we, we played that song probably like three times every practice. I think they, our strength coaches, they, they outplayed that song the whole week. But when they came to the fourth quarter, I did not expect everyone to be jumping around like that. We just expected just to just kind of just soak in soak in that stadium and 78,000 fans that's a lot and they're allowed all game they they're making sure that we felt it so when the fourth quarter came around the energy on our sideline was I never felt that before yeah the ultimate savagery uh is playing that song and celebrating in the locker room as well you know I th tell us about the locker room scene and what that experience was like <laughs> we had a couple players talk and then a couple coaches talk and then our strength coach knew he we he we our coaches gave him the, the strength coaches the the game ball, and uh, right after he's done talking, he wanted to play the song. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had everyone in the locker room jump, and we had coaches in there, we had staff in there, we had president President Nelson in there. I mean, uh, President, president Worthen. Worthen. President Worthen that would have been awesome if President Nelson would have <laughs> been oh, yeah. there. He was in yeah. Seattle. But, yeah. We had President Richards in there, we, him and his wife, and everyone was just it was just it was fun. That's all it is, just good energy. I mean, it, did your phone die from all the text messages? What, what was the reception like? <laughs> I just I had a lot of love for my family, my parents, friends from back home. It was good just to feel all the love and support from all my family and friends, so it was good. Aleva Hifo, BYU wide receiver, part-time quarterback with us on BYU Sports Nation. Now, do you take that evidence of what you did and say to the coaches, hey, just so you know, if you need me to throw another pass again like I'm, I'm one for one and I got a quarterback rating of 690 yeah 690 is pretty good yeah you, you use that as uh you know a, a weapon in your arsenal to <laughs> oh, I will now I will now moving forward trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I better be personnel into some passing some passing plays well th this is your first time in studio B right yeah welcome first off oh it's nice and let's have you uh, sign our flag if you give, him, said, give him the king size yeah, uh yeah. sharpie when you beat Wisconsin we go to another level <laughs> mind giving us uh, your autograph on that Course. All right. Yes. Aleve Hifo Aleve adding Hifo, his signature. Dude. The jet sweep specialist. To the BYU Sports Nation flag. Slash. Yeah, wherever you want. So if you see someone's signature you don't really like, you can just go over it. Just, just go right over yeah, it. Yeah, again, when you do what you did against Wisconsin, You're like, oh, <laughs> you, have free, you have yeah. free reign on the flag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Also, let's give uh, Aleve some BYU Sports yes. Nation karma for yes. McNeese State. Good luck this Saturday. Live on BYU TV. No pressure. This is our channel. We need to have a big game. Man. It's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Aleva. Thank you.